Today I wanted to talk about Meta and whether or not that it was in a good buy position right now and whether or not it was after earnings. Uh, if you're familiar with the way I, I swing trade, you've read my book on swing trading, you'll be very familiar with these charts. These are the ones I use to set up swing trades and determine entry points. Uh, my goal in swing trading is just to try to get the best entry point that I can. Uh, obviously, it doesn't always go my way, but if you can stack the odds as much in your favor as possible, then your chances of being successful go up dramatically. We see that you know just before earnings, you know Meta was a little bit, from my standpoint, a little bit high as it was traveling traveling on the second Bollinger Band. This wouldn't have been a good entry point for me. Right through here would have been a good entry point if I'd gotten in. Uh, I would have wanted to get out before earnings because earnings are, are kind of a crapshoot. You never know what's going to happen. So unless I'm doing a earnings trade, I, I don't want to be in during this earnings period. So really, from my standpoint, the swing trading standpoint, the way I do swing trading, you know, this would have been the area right here, you know, which is this area on this chart uh, that I'd been most interested in, in trying to go long if I had wanted to be long back in this area. But really the question was, is it a good entry today? We know that based on you know my swing trading rules, we know that after earnings you had this huge gap up. You're at this third Bollinger Band. You're well above this Keltner channel, well above your wave, well above all of your moving averages, and, and they're just going almost exponentially up, which is not something that I want to see if I'm looking to get into a new swing trade. You know, odds are when it gets here, yes, it could theoretically continue up. But you know, you had RSI through the roof on all three time frames. So everything would make you think that it was going to come back down. So you certainly would not want to enter right here on a, on a long swing trade. You, know, you look at this candle, you know, the sell off here, you know, that would have concerned me. This candle would have really concerned me if I was looking for a long entry. Still wasn't in a good area for me just because of where it was at on the uh, Bollinger Bands and, and the Keltner Channel on my wave. Uh, this candle actually did show strength, but it still didn't comply with my rules on swing trading. And I'm still way too extended. You know, way too. I mean, I'm way way over this wave here, which I'm way way too extended. Even you know, even here, uh, you see how far you are above these moving averages. Just just not a good high probability trade area. Uh, you come back here, you got immediate weakness where it sold off. Uh, like I said, this candle showed strength, but you see what happened the next day because of how extended everything was and how high this RSI was. And even your MACD, you know, look at the the, the uh, slope on this MACD. It's just, there's just too much gap in here. You're hitting, this is your uh, difference right here between these two lines. And you can see how, how it's peaking out right here. If you look on your strength strength of trend here, again, it's, the slope is way too steep, and it's right up at the, top, at the tops. So now you've got the sell-off, and this is where it gets interesting from the way I swing trade. You've got the sell-off back into this middle Bollinger Band area. You're at the very top of your wave here, and you've come below the 10, M 10 SMA, or exponential moving average rather, and you're just above the 20, which 20 is a good moving is a good area for me, which is right here and right here. So is it a buy right now? I'm going to say no. Now the way I swing trade, it does meet most of the requirements, you know, for an entry for me right here. And, and I could do an entry, but it would have to be a really conservative entry, maybe a deep in the money covered call or a cash secured put or something like that. You know, I wouldn't want to just bet it's going straight up from here either, just by going along the stock or doing, you know, a call debit spread. And like I said, if you've read the book, you read my book, you know that that this is a, these are areas that I would typically look to go long when I've got a good trend. But the problem with Meta is this gap right here and how quickly it went up. And it almost looks like you're going to get a gap fill, which means it's going to come back down into this area. Obviously, I don't know for sure that it's going to do that, but I trade based on probability. And I think there's there we are better stocks right now than this with this gap and this steep line up here, this steep, steep, steep wave coming up. Uh, and even these, uh, look how steep these moving averages are. You've also still got your RSI on the 14 period pretty high. 
and you've got a crossover of your MACD here going back to the downside. Even though, strictly speaking, from the way that, that I swing trade, if you look at this chart, which is what you have to do, you know, you, there are no just rules out there that you can just follow. You have to look at everything. And it meets a lot of the criteria of what I would consider, a, a place I would consider going along on a swing trade. But if you look at the totality of it, you know, you look at the, you know, the, the, the move coming down here, you know, it's starting to lose its upward momentum. You're still pretty high on this RSI here. MACD is crossed to the downside, and you've got a potential gap fill. Now, when the market opens tomorrow, uh, Meta may just take right back off. That's very possible. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that it will or it won't. What I do know, though, is I don't think this is that high of a probability for uh, uh, st from a standpoint, probability standpoint uh, of going up from here. And if it does, it'll probably bounce around 180 and 170 and let everything catch back up as it consolidates. I would be surprised if it took straight back up to 200 from here. Uh, again, not saying it won't. You know, I don't know what it's going to do. Uh, you know, the, the, whoever buying, whoever's buying and selling the stocks are going to determine what it's going to do. Whatever the overall market is doing is going to determine what it's going to do after the earnings run up. And if the market is strong this week, then it can certainly continue up. I just think there's a lot of potential for it to consolidate or move down as opposed to move up or consolidate and move up from here. Uh, now, Friday, if we come in, which is, you know, four days from now, and we come in and it's been consolidating around 170 to 180 and all of these things have started to catch back up and it's in the middle of this wave and this is flattened out and these <clears throat> these moving averages have caught back up then you know it may, may be a, a different story uh, but today monday president's day uh this is just not a buy for me here I, I there's just too much potential for it to continue down uh, like I said, I'm really concerned about that gap fill, really concerned about all these slopes you have here. They're just so steep. Concerned about the RSI and the MACD crossover. Uh, it's just not what I would consider a high probability trade. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video. Uh, if you haven't read my, my book on swing trading, uh, you can get a lot more details on how I trade these. There's also some links below where you can see how these different... Uh, indicators are set up and how I use them uh, but but do please take everything into consideration when looking for a trade and one thing that people probably don't talk about enough is what is the market doing you know if the overall market's down but I say the Nasdaq when you're looking at meta if the Nasdaq is is moving down meta had good earnings and it went up eventually there's a high probability that that the Nasdaq moving down is going to put downward pressure on, on meta so those are things you have to look at, too, when, you, when you're trading stocks. Uh, there is an entry I could set up here if I really wanted to. Uh, I just think there are better trades out there. So to me, today, it, with this chart I'm looking at right here and these indicators, to me, Meta is just not a buyer just yet. Now, Friday, my, my, I may feel completely different if it's bounced around. If it's shot back up, then it's definitely not going to be a buy because it's going to be up in these levels again, and, and I don't do swing trades when we're up in these levels. So I would have to wait for it to pull back a second time. Uh, but anyway, like I said, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.